computer. Okay, it just started. I don't know what it's doing, but I didn't have to choose. <laughs> I'm recording as well, just to okay. be safe. But okay, okay, I think we're good to start. All right. It's only like three. Ah, there are many girls. So they are groups. Yeah. There's a bunch of yeah. people, yeah. <laughs> In, they are different parts with groups, I think. Yeah. But one picture is stuck. Jasmine's knee is stuck. Yeah. I think they've been having a little bit of trouble with maybe the internet. So, yeah. Okay. But the other one's on now. Yeah. Oh, Choker. he's gone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but you guys are good to start. We're recording so we can um, share also after. Okay. 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 So we, we can start, start if you yeah, want to share. But yeah, I we can start. Sure. I mean, it's recording all the time. I, I want to make sure that they can hear us. Like, can you give a sign, like something like yeah. of the girls that you, ah, okay. <laughs> so, because fine. if not, it feels like we speak just like to, I don't know, to some <laughs> um, part of the computer or to some like parts here. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm happy to see you. Um, Aya, ah, yeah, we are coming back to, and I'm also happy Seda, to share something with you because yeah. we did something together and we were talking for a while now about it and think about what we could do. So I'm happy we start that. Um, maybe we yeah, yeah, I'm so happy also. <laughs> um, sure, you start first. Um, yeah, maybe just short. So like my name is Berit, I'm Berit Kaufert. I'm a sports psychologist and a yoga teacher working here in Germany, but also really internationally um, online. Um, I'm a former professional athlete and like during the presentation, you're gonna, um, I, you're gonna, I'm gonna share some of my story, and I think say that too. But yeah. <laughs> yes, we will share the story inside the presentation. But just to say, my name is. You can call me Seda, and I'm from Turkey. Uh, I have played in 20 years as a professional in Turkish league uh, as a setter, and I just quit uh, professional level volleyball two years ago. But I played 20 years in a row so it was long and now I'm working as a mindfulness coach and yoga teacher and now lately I work I have worked with the Turkish um, Sultan's League team Aydın Bükşehir Belediyesi and uh, also I'm now in the summertime leading a group for the mindful sport performance enhancement and that's it <laughs> yeah nice um, we're gonna do it like this, that we share like our presentation, um, but if you have things to add or to ask, just do that right away. Um, yeah, we don't want to have like us like being the experts and you like listening. It's like, it's something we can do together also. Um, yeah. And yeah, that's like, it's the only pictures of me. <laughs> Because of the <laughs> but um, say that, please, yeah, at any time you want to. Yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> and how we wanted to start is like, just take a moment to really imagine how would your life look like if you were able to trust yourself and your abilities fully? And how would your life look like if you had a stable mind, no matter what happened? And really get clear pictures of what would that mean for you. And also about like, how would your life look like if you could really show what you're made of? I think maybe your life would look a little bit different. And this is a, the work, Seda and I, what we are doing to create this kind of stable mind to like, make you be able to really show what you're made of. It doesn't matter what happens in the, in the outside. Um, and what we want to share with you is like three key shifts um, that I experienced during my professional career and probably also Seda and um, also that are helping my clients a lot right now. And the first one is like, okay, get to know your emotions really well. So get really self-aware and then stop fighting against them. 
um, because usually we tend to fight against them, to run away from them, but um, maybe that's not the right way. We're going to share a little bit more about that a little bit later. And then the second one is like, get really clear about the kind of person you want to be as a player, but also, also maybe as a woman, as a human being. And the third one is like, learn to commit to your values and goals, which is not always so easy. I understand that, but maybe we can also share something helpful about that. Um, and we're going to go through that three shifts and explain a little bit more. And um, who is that for? For sure, that's for athletes like who don't want to be guided by their emotions. So if you are, if you feel nervous or if you feel angry, like sometimes the emotion leads you. But if you want to stop that, well, this is probably for you. Um, and then it's, it's for athletes who dare to find their own way of flow, of like having their own kind of stable mind, who want to perform at the highest level and not on anybody's um, highest level, but on your, your personal highest level. And also who are willing, who decide to really face any challenge, who, not, who, not, who don't want to run away from any challenge. And this takes time and this takes practice and I think Seda can share a little bit about the mental training paradox right yeah 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 I would love to share about it because mental training is really having a paradox because anytime when I'm working with the athletes when I ask them uh, what is the mental training is defining what is the meaning for you and they are always saying that mental training is very important and mental training is this and I, you know, mental part and mental strength is so important. And sometimes when you lose a game, you just ask the girls or the guys, like, why do you think that you lost the game? What was your um, weakest point in that game? And they say that, oh, my mind, my mental part was not strong enough. And they are mentioning this mental part so often. And also the literature, like the scientific uh, papers are showing that uh, athletes and coaches are giving so much um, credit to mental part. However, when they say this and when I ask them, uh, okay, like mental training, as far as I understand, you're not mentioning the tactical part, you're not mentioning the technical part, you're not mentioning the physical part, you're mentioning the mental part. And they say that, yes, more important sometimes. So you pay time for technical practices, a few hours, tactical practices, few hours, or physical practices every week, maybe 10 practices. So I just asked them, how much time do you spend for your mental training? And they just say that we don't pay any time for that. So this is the mental paradox thing. You know, when you ask an athlete, they say that mental part is so important. But when you ask them, how much time do they pay for that? Because as tactic, technique, and strength is important. It's, it's, equally sometimes more important they mention they don't pay that much time for that so this is the mental training paradox that we are talking about and what we are trying to do here with Barrett is that trying to uh, show and trying to let you understand and maybe become a little bit more aware that mental part is important and it requires training because it has it's like a muscle to build in your mind so yeah hope we can share our <laughs> information and knowledge here. Thank you, Seda. Um, I like also the picture of like, of like squats, squatting. If you want to learn squatting, so and your physical coach is like starting to explain you a squat, you wouldn't never think that you are able to squat now like 100 kilos. You would like start with maybe just a bar and then you put a little bit more weight and then you put a little bit more weight. But what happens with athletes I work with I explain something and they, they come back and say, oh, in the last, um, I don't know, the last game, I wasn't able to apply that. I'm like, okay, well, I was just like explaining it to you. You need to apply it. And then maybe in an easy situation and then maybe in a harder situation and then maybe even harder. And then in the end, you will be able to do this in games and in really stressful situations because you trained your muscle, your muscle in the brain, like Seda said. Um, and for your physical body, it's so clear, right? If you see the squat example, but actually it's really the same thing with the mental part. Do you agree? Yeah, and I, yeah, I, I totally agree. And the thing that we are talking about is neuroplasticity actually, 
I mean, you are building your brain uh, with new pathways between the neurons and with your mind, with your way of thinking and with your mental trainings, you are building new, new pathways between the neurons, which is like a muscle building. And it's called neuroplasticity and which is possible in all your lifetime in any age in, for anything. Uh, so this is happening like that. <laughs> yeah. Like um, biologically and physically also. <laughs> so maybe you think some of those apply to you that sometimes maybe you fall into holes. And also thank you for everybody who was putting in the questionnaire. Um, and I saw some of them also like that you put that in there. Um, that you fall into holes like during practice or matches or maybe even in free time and you have actually no idea how to rescue yourself. Maybe like you rescue yourself by having like Netflix and Instagram. So with some kind of like numbing out, but you're not able to confront really that emotion. Or you experience maybe anxiety, which is like way bigger than actually the situation would be crier. Or maybe you're not feeling good enough, like maybe not even for like playing volleyball at that level at all um, in some situations or that overcomes you like some kind of wave. Um, or you feel like, oh, I'm depending on other people's opinions, like coaches, like maybe national team coaches, maybe like somebody who's guiding the practice. And also um, you feel really big expectations on yourself and maybe also from others. And well, that is, that's pretty heavy. And if you have any of those, and I think everybody can relate at me, at least like I can relate a lot. And I, I wrote that down because, well, probably I experienced that too. Um, that I have awesome news because none of them are actually a problem. They are just the symptoms because you didn't learn how to apply those like key shifts in your, in your performance or in your life. Um, why do I know that? Or why do we know that? Because we, we have been there and I'm going to share a little bit of my story. And after say that also, please, please share a little bit of your story. Um, so yep. this was in 2007 when I was the first time with the senior national team and I was pretty insecure about my abilities and also about my body. I always felt like a little bit mm, not good enough. I was always like worrying and like holding, holding myself back. I was like constantly and really depending on like the approval from coaches. So if I did something good and he didn't see it, I thought it's not worth anything. Um, I was devastated. Like if I like for every failure or loss, if I didn't play, if I played bad, well, that was like really hard on me. And also maybe this is a German thing, but maybe this is also like fitting into this picture is like, I was very eager um, also because I never felt good enough. Even like two years later, not really a lot changed. Um, in the meanwhile, well, I got German champion for the second time and also um, junior world champion. But in the end, I still had no idea like what kind of person I going to be, what kind of player I want to be. But I felt that like I was, there's, there's more about it. Um, and also nobody taught me like how to deal with my emotions. Um, so I decided to play happy and to work a little bit harder. What, what maybe, maybe is also your way of dealing with that. But then there was one moment when I played in Poland and um, I was pretty burned out. I was unhappy. I didn't play. I had a hard season. I had a really hard time. Um, I didn't play at all. And questions came to my mind. Okay, what am I doing that for? If it's not, if it's not, if it's not making me happy, um, it's actually make no sense. So I had no idea like how to deal with that. But then like I started to change things. I started to like apply my, my studies actually. I was studying psychology at that time and I was trying like to, to do yoga and like to, to, I started to become more whole, I would say. And well, today, like I don't have 20 years of professional career like Seda, but I have 11 at least. 
Um, and nine years. I'm the... old. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, <laughs> I would say I, I don't say I figured out everything, but um, I'm a grown-up woman. Um, I know my values. Um, I connected to myself, and yeah, I feel I can really express myself fully. And um, yeah, like I said, I'm leading athletes to growth and mindfulness. Um, and to become more whole. This is something what's for me personally is really like a, a big thing because I think there's, you are whole and there's just things that we need to strive off that's like holding you back. Um, yeah, I have a master in psychology and a yoga teacher um, and I'm working with a lot of athletes with like also Olympian athletes with a Champions League team, um, Schwerin here where I'm living um, with some top scorers of their leagues, and I found it becoming whole. And Seda, what is your story? Why did you start with mindfulness? Why is it so important to you? <laughs> yeah, actually, I met with uh, mindfulness and meditations um, subconsciously first, <laughs> oh. because when I was an athlete, I yeah, I, first of all, I used to like um, reading books and you know watching. Um, shows about the athletes lives and I was a big fan of Phil Jackson the oh, yeah. you know basketball coach um, and I was reading his books and but there also he was mentioning some stuff about mindfulness and zen but I wasn't aware of anything when I was reading this but I was like okay he's doing something but I don't understand it so well and I was not that much into it until I needed it <laughs> and one season I uh, I had an injury third time, the same place. It was for my calf, it has a, where I had a um, strain uh, in the second degree. And it was happening third time, like every season it was happening. Every season I was, you know, making the recovery and then again, and then again. So, and that season I was playing in Ankara uh, in Halfang and I was like, come on, you know, I'm really taking care of myself. I'm really hard worker. You know, I'm working really good. I'm practicing really good. I'm taking care of myself well. I'm, you know, having um, like nutrition is good. Sleep is good. Everything is good. Like how does this happen to me? You know, I was just questioning and you know, I was just so first frustrated. And then later on, I was like, there is something, some part missing here. And I started digging about this, about myself. And I said, okay, let's go for a psychologist. But before a psychologist, let's try with a meditation or something, because this is what Phil Jackson was mentioning all the time. And I was reading, you know, um, George Mumford, also the mindful athlete look and everything. And also I was uh, a follower of Dustin Watton, the oh, yeah. Liberal, yeah. Uh, and, and he was always mentioning this and I was like, there's something here that I don't know. And it's, it's not, it, there was nothing, no source here in Turkey about this. So I said that, okay, let's dig in there and then just like find out what I can do. And then after I started making Headspace uh, mindfulness meditations every day, but that, that, that those time I was more like a yo-yo meditator, you know, I was meditating sometimes for a period of time and after I was quitting and after again, after again. Because uh, these kind of things, when it is so new as a concept and as an um, uh, applying stuff, you need a, a peer or a guide just to show you the way how to do this, you know, in a structured way. But I didn't have this person in my life, so I was just trying to find my way in the dark. <laughs> but in any way, um, that year I started with meditations and the next summer I started doing yoga where I found out that it was helping me so much with the range of motion in my you know, joints and everywhere. And this was happening when I was 23 years old, actually. Okay. And then, um, and then I started working with a psychologist, which was like a cool approach in my body uh, with a good physiotherapist and everything. And of course I recovered well. And then after I continued after that, I played more for three, four seasons more. And then um, I was more into the meditation part and yoga part that time in the last years of my career. And when I started, when I planned that I'm just going to quit this year, it's going to be the last season, I said that, okay, let's dive deep, deep into this subject more because I want to be like uh, a mentor or 
for the other athletes, I want to be a guide for this because I didn't have this guide when I was searching my way. So uh, after that, uh, but first I was also mostly, uh, as I believe in the uh, mind and body reunion, as yoga says, <laughs> I, I had uh, a few more certificate programs from states about the integrative nutrition and nutrition coaching. And then after functional medicine coaching, which are all including the healthy lifestyle uh, where I guide my clients about the, if they are, even they are sometimes sick, we are working uh, in collaboration with doctors. And if they are not as a, like, um, like a protective way of uh, approach in their health, uh, I lead them for a healthy way of living to find the balance in their life. Uh, so mindfulness is also very helpful here uh, because it's a life skill, not just the meditations that you put every day, sit and you know do in your life. So uh, after that, this path brought me here. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, you're welcome. So can we start with the three shifts? Are you ready, Seda? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, finally. Now everybody's just waiting for that. And now we're talking just about ourselves. Um, so the first <laughs> yes. one, maybe you remember, like get to know your emotions really well and stop fighting against them. And there are some lies we all grew up with. And I think they're especially big in like professional sports. And maybe also you know them. Um, and the next slide going to be like about the reality, what I'm actually thinking, what's the truth. Um, but all, like me, like Seda, and probably also you, um, like grew up with like emotions are weakness. Um, I really need to feel self-confident and perform well, um, to perform well. And also like in the sheets you were filling out, I also saw that some people write like, I need to be more self-confident or I need to trust my abilities more and stuff like this. Um, and that's that's probably true, but you miss you miss a little um, you miss a little part. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna say that soon. Um, and then, like, if I feel nervous or if I feel insecure, that leads to failure. Um, and we connect both of that: good emotions with good performance, bad emotions with bad performance. And this is this doesn't need to have a connection. You can do whatever you want and like feel however you want and then also like i heard that so often fake it until you make it um yeah um and i always asking myself why should i fake something can can't i just make it without faking anything um but yeah what the reality looks like is like emotions gonna always be part of a human life like you will never ever be able to stop that um, not thoughts, not emotions. Um, if they are good ones, if they are bad ones, they are not a strength and they are not a weakness. And then also about like being nervous or insecure. Well, that's also a really normal human reaction if something matters to you and you're not sure about the outcome. So if those two components, like it's important to you and like you know, you're insecure about the outcome, you're going to be nervous. Well, this is, this is human life. Welcome to like a human experience. Um, everybody actually feels like that. If, you, if you're not nervous or it's not important to you or you know already the outcome, think about that. Um, and then about self-confidence. Well, I was thinking a lot about that because like usually athletes always come to ask me like, okay, help me to be more self-confident. And I think, yes, self-confidence is um, is the outcome of our practice and say that maybe you agree on that but actually it's not the goal i go, like we're going to show you how to deal with those emotions like with the good ones with the bad ones and then the outcome is self-confidence is being calm is being less frustrated but this is never like what we what we aim for we don't want to like avoid all of that and you're going to notice that like self-compassion is so much more powerful than self-confidence because like being self-compassionate, you actually have your best friend always with you. If you don't quit yourself, um, when you do, when you fail, when you say, okay, I, I stay by my side, even if I fail, well, 
this is strong, so you will never be alone. There will always be somebody. And about like, fake it until you make it. You, you don't believe how often like, I thought like, that this, this talk is, is like, is, is not, is not good to say to athletes. Um, because it's, it's much more about like, observe what's there, like noticing it, allow yourself to feel it. There's no need to fake anything. Welcome it. Like I said, like, welcome human experience and then go on with what's important right now and that's a powerful question what's important right now say now do you have to add something did you experience that too yeah i can kind of fakes. <laughs> yeah i ex of course i experienced all of it and then you think that you are not good enough all the time and it's making you um like all the time feeling like your lack of something however when you recognize that in mindfulness we say that emotions may be pleasant or unpleasant or neutral um, and they may visit you anytime and it's like the visitors in your home so uh, the attitude is the most important thing in this um, culture actually mindfulness is a culture coming from the east and in this culture we say that whatever is arising we just approach it with non-judgmental way and with acceptance, with the, like you are greeting a friend, whatever the feeling is, it may be sometimes the emotion may be very unpleasant. However, it's it belongs to humans. And when you know that this is so humane and you don't avoid from it, it's just there. And when you know that it's coming from the common humanity, everyone, every athlete is experiencing this. You're just trying to understand the situation and then start showing yourself the self-compassion, actually. So I think it's really important during the performance, especially. Yeah, and it's also maybe not like it's maybe a new approach for you. Um, but like, mm -hmm. try to be open and maybe um, try that. Because we say it like it's the no most normal thing in the world, but most humans, most athletes don't think like that. They always like try to fight or try to avoid from their emotions. Um, but we also brought like mm -hmm. some quotes from athletes. Um, this is Anna. She played in, in France in the first league of France last year. And she said, okay, when I feel overwhelmed or stressed, I don't feel bad about feeling bad. That's huge. <laughs> and I think that that's like in one sentence, I, I couldn't say it much better. Like I don't feel bad anymore about like feeling bad. That's the point. Okay, you can feel bad, but then you can also do whatever you want. And then this is a, a soccer athlete I worked with. And yeah, she's also speaking about like that the biggest thing she took out from our sessions is like mindfulness and that she can apply it everywhere in her life. That there's a way of like making experiences and being in the present moment um, without putting any judgment or value in that. Um, yeah. She did a really good job also like working on that. Um, so does anybody of you want to share something about the first shift about like getting to know your emotions? Or you have like you experienced that too or I don't know if it's so easy for you to share if you're just looking on one like phone screen somewhere <laughs> in the cafe. Yeah. Okay, we will go on, but whenever you want, just like hold your hand or, or share if you want. Yeah, or any questions, anytime. Yeah. So the second shift is like getting clear about what kind of person or player you want to be. Um, and that's a huge thing. What I'm speaking about is like getting clear about values. And I think values are not always like so tangible, like what are values? Like a goal is like really clear. Okay, I want to be a world champion. I want to be in the national team. I want to play in this or that club. Um, but values go way deeper. And actually, if you know your values and yet, then you can set the goals in the direction of your values, well, you're going you're gonna to reach those goals like with a lot bigger probability. Um, and like what I wrote down here is just some secrets about values. Um, because, yeah, maybe to make it a little bit more clear about values and the difference to goals is you can never 
fail them. Um, that means, let's say value is the direction you want to go, let's say that's respect, and then you go, you do something disrespectful. Well, you didn't fail the value, you can just change the direction and go back in the, in the way of like um, respect. Or, and also you can never reach a value. So if, let's keep with respect, if you were, if you was respectful one time, well, it's not like you check it, like, okay, goal, and I did it. Um, but like, it's a kind of lifestyle or of way of being. Um, and also they are more like compass. Yeah, good picture. Good you bring that up. Like yeah. showing you the way. Actually, yeah. yeah. If, you, if you lose yourself a little bit, well, you can look on your compass and say, okay, this is the direction I want to go. Mm -hmm. And this is huge, actually, to, to like actually never be really lost. Well, maybe you feel lost, but you know, okay, I'm going to find my way by this compass. Um, good point. Also, yeah. Yeah, this compass makes the direction really clear. Um, and also what literature says is like that um, athletes who know their values, actually they work harder and more persistent and especially when things get really hard. Because if you're not clear about your values and about the player you wanna be, and then it gets hard, it's more likely that you like, ah, okay, let's quit. Let's do something else. Um, yeah, and that's not what, like, what we feel. It's also what people found out, um, like, looking at other athletes. Um, what do you want to share about, like, values? Is there something more? Yeah, actually, with the team also this season with Aiden, uh, we worked as team values because values are very important personally and as a team uh, because uh, they can... Um, be like the structures to build a culture and uh, it can be your own personal culture to, to follow in your life or it, sometimes it can be a team culture and um, as you said they are more helpful during the difficult times I mean when you lose a game uh, you know that these are your values and even though you win or you lose, you just follow them and they show you the way as a like a camp compass. And um, it's important to bring a team culture. And also, for example, your goal may be to win a game, but every team's goal is to win the games when you go to play a game. So sometimes your target just needs to follow your compass. I mean, you can say that, okay, this is my goal. I'm just going to, you know, work hard to play uh, good and work hard to win that game. But actually your goal there is not to win the game. Your goal there is just to um, work, keep working hard, following your values. And then as if you have done the previous job good enough and the preparation good enough, then the result will be the goal actually. So we call this like a, not the um, conclusion-centered uh, approach. We call this like the process-centered. You know, you're more concentrated on the process, how you're just going to keep on moving all the time. So values is really good dynamics there in the process. Mm -hmm. And like we said before, that often we are oriented on our emotions or thoughts. We have an emotion and we act like that. But the way better to act is like guided by your values. And this is hard <laughs> because first you need to notice your emotion and then you need to know, okay, what are my values? And then act like you want to wanna do. And this is a practice like, and, and an ability you can learn actually. Um, okay, this is a long, um, long quote again by Anna because she put it so well. But what I think is important about this quote is that if she feels like dizzy or stagnant or like not in the right place, she's like, ah, there's something that's really important to me. These are my values. And those things make me feel alive and feel true and make my life feel beautiful. And I connect and then she can actually go in that direction again from what's, what's, what, whatever is happening in the outside. And 
yeah, I think she put that really well in one sentence, what we try to <laughs> try to um, tell you now in a long way. Um, and then it's the third shift. Any questions are welcome. Um, and it's about commitment because then probably you know your goals. And maybe after this talk, maybe you're gonna think also a little bit about your values and well done, that's a good start. But then it's also about commitment because like many people are motivated to act, I don't know, respectful or to win a game or to like have a big car or to, I don't know, to everything like, like many, you can find many people do having that. Um, but actually you cannot find so many people who are really committed to that. And what we mean by commitment is like to do the actions that's going to lead to the outcome you want to have, to your goal um, on a regular basis, to really consistently do the things. And then the thing about commitment is they are coming things in your way. There are bad emotions and like sometimes you don't feel motivated and sometimes you feel tired and sometimes, I don't know, you feel nervous and then still do the things you want to do and actually this leads like for me to the one key question like to the to the big question who like wh what's like um putting it all together which is like are you willing actually to commit to your values that you found out and to accept and accept is another big thing um to what like yeah to accept whatever discomfort comes up in your mind, in your body, because it's gonna come up. And are you still willing to commit? Um, and if you say yes, I think it's a, it's a really good start. Um, do you wanna say something about acceptance and letting go, Seda? Because mm -hmm. I think accepting yeah. is like one of the key points. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in mindfulness, the most one of the most important thing is like uh, the attitude, how you when you are like um, showing your attention to something deliberately. Um, the third component is the attitude here uh, with the attention and with intention, we say the third thing is called um, attitude. And um, there are some attitudes coming from this Eastern uh, culture and one of the is the first one actually is acceptance uh, but this doesn't mean that accepting everything just is accepting the things as they are it's not like writing stories over it or it's not like making assumptions over it or it's not like uh, ju making judgments about it it's just seeing it as it is the things or the people as they are and then after sometimes it may be nice for you or it may be not nice for you because some things and actually not some most of the things are out of our control so sometimes you just need to let them go and um, actually anything uh, not even good things that we live and the bad things that we experience is not permanent everything everything is temporary and everything is going some way it's finishing, it's some way it's ending. I say that every song has an ending and we just need to enjoy the music. So uh, let it go is this uh, attitude that we talk in mindfulness also. Every discomfort in your mind and body will go away one time someday. <laughs> For me also like adding about acceptance is that it's not like giving in or like not, not being able to change anything it's actually the opposite. It's like you see things as they are and this is the start of a changement. This is like when you see it, just if you see, mm -hmm. if you accept that this was not good, you can start change something. It's also that mm -hmm. that not like, it's not what you said, it's not judgment. It's not like, like thinking it's a good thing. Acceptance just means like giving the moment, the, the moment that's already here, the ability to be here. Like, because it's, it's out of our control. Yeah, it's a, it's a really interesting concept, I think. Um, and yeah, um, maybe you met Katharina. So I worked with her and she also um, gave an, a quote. 
So she says, I become more aware of how my body feels. I got better at being and staying present, not letting my thoughts bring nausea again or focusing on bad moves I made. So there are bad moves. There is a bad feeling, but well, I can, I can choose where I want to focus. It's not that I need to avoid that. It's not that I need to fight against it. I just see the moment as it is. And well, I go on more or less. And then also another one from Michaela. Um, and she said that her breakthrough in our work was like to create a mindfulness routine. Um, and I think it could also be a breakthrough for, for you guys. Um, so, and yeah, because we were speaking about commitment, she said also like, I have the power to dictate my direction despite of emotional conflict. So that's what I meant by, okay, you don't, you don't need to be led by your emotions. You can be led by your values. You can choose actually what you want to do. Um, I hope that like you get a glimpse of what we try to, to try to tell you, because I think it's, it's, it can be life changing. <laughs> I think that yeah 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 and actually these skills are not just for sports it's for life you know they're like life skills when you learn them of course it's affecting the sports that you do uh, as athletes you know sports is like it's becoming like our whole life actually is a moment but uh, what I'm trying to say here that it's life skills it can affect your relations outside the court or affect your all life experience outside the court also mm -hmm. I agree 100 percent so we're a little bit over um we wanted to share a little tool and give me a sign if you're still able to listen and we're going to give you that tool or if you say okay it's all in it's still okay because this mm -hmm. is something I often share with my athletes and also said I said she's like giving that as a homework sometimes so And again, mm -hmm. this is an ability and something you need to practice. Um, but it's going like that. It's a stop, which where the S is for stop, like mentally and maybe also physically. Maybe stand still for a moment, maybe close your eyes. If you're not able to, okay, stop mentally. Then T is for like, take a deep breath. So, and like inhaling and exhaling gives you the ability to come back to here and now because your breath is here and now. It's not the breath of like one minute ago or, or like the next breath. It's just here and now. And by coming back to feeling your breath, you're not anymore in your head. So first good thing, you're feeling and you're in the here and now. Then it's like a really important part. And this is like also big of Inseda's work. So observe, like observing. And we said like, it's, it's like observing and it's not judging. Um, and it's not, it's not like think about it or make a story out of it. I just observe without judgments. And then the big question, what's important right now? And if you're clear about your values, you're going to have like a really quick answer on what's important right now. And probably even if you're not clear about values, you know what's important right now. Um, maybe like, let's say, let's just make an example. Um, you start to get bored, you know, and you had a long day now. So you are listening to a talk before that. Um, And then you're observing, oh, I get bored. I don't listen so well anymore. Well, you don't judge that, but you ask, okay, what's important right now? Well, answer that for yourself. I don't know what's important for you right now, um, but maybe it's to stay here the last 10 minutes. Um, it's the same thing for practices. And then P is like, take a decision and proceed. Go on, do what you want. Um, how are you teaching that, Seda? Is it the same way like I teach it? Yeah, yeah, it's the same way actually. And when I stop, when I say stop, I mostly uh, suggest them to stop also physically, just to recognize and also some little bit orientation, like where is your food, you know, just feeling the uh, contact of your soul with the ground and just where, wherever your hands are, maybe it's touching your body, it's on your lap or it's on your sides of your body. Just, just try to come back to your physical sensations when you stop, you know, because we mostly underestimate the importance of the physical sensations that we have, which is including sometimes a smell, sometimes a noise, you know, when you just recognize some moments, you stop and you recognize that the birds 
and maybe some sound, some wind or anything. And this stop part may be changing for anyone, but uh, it's really helpful in this part. I try to give these kind of cues and keys if they want to stop just to, you know, see the stop and come to the present moment. Mm -hmm. And of course, taking a deep breath and becoming aware of the breath is very important because we are around 17,000 breaths a day having, but how many of them are we aware of actually? And imagine that we are without our breath for a few minutes and then we are gone, you know, it's that much important and we are not aware of it. Yeah. And um, observing without judgments is really important. Just looking at your thoughts or emotions or physical sensations like clouds, just watching them pass by and just asking yourself the question, what's important now? And then proceeding is coming from a wiser concernment, you know, it's nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, this is really powerful. And I go a little bit more in depth with that, um, with the athletes I work with, but this is the main structure for sure. So yeah. I had, I had one more quote, uh, that's so important to me. And like, also maybe you see why I call my whole company, like becoming whole, um, because there's nothing to fix or optimize about you. The way in the direction of happiness and success is like, following the guidelines of becoming truer, becoming more yourself and becoming more whole. And I believe that a hundred percent, really. Um, and how you can apply all of that to your situation, because I was, I was reading all of that, all of what you wrote. Um, and like, I saw goals like becoming more spiritual, like being more calm, being more self-confident like um, learning more about mental skills, um, being more mindful. I was reading and I was happy about that too. Um, and whoops, like option one is of course, figure it out on your own. Like say that I did like some years ago and I did like yeah. 10 years ago or like work with Seda or work with me, you know, and <laughs> we, light, we guide you through that process. Um, so, and just to not attract the wrong people <laughs> it's like um if you're not ready for a change okay this is not for you and if if you are not your priority this is not for you if you're not willing to really open your eyes and you like to feel what you feel and to um to put in some work like to put in some squats like we were saying in the beginning um it's not for you and if you're not ready to invest into yourself okay no it's also not for you but if yes this is like you cannot like you have my my contact details for sure from Ryan. And this is also where you can always book a free call, which is like completely free. And Sarah, where can they reach you? Yeah, I have my phone number with Ryan too. And I have my website, which is my name, zainabseda.uslu.com. <laughs> and you, they can reach me and from social media also, my Instagram account and Facebook, I'm leading them. So you can reach me anywhere just type in my name <laughs> yeah for me it's actually the same yeah it's like all together again um and actually i would really love to hear your feedback or something you think about the talk or something i don't know that's coming up right now just to know okay you were listening kind of and we were not just talking to ourselves because we didn't hear anybody of you yeah yeah and please ask if you want to ask any questions anytime you want. <laughs> Maybe the, the concept is new for you. I don't know how much experience you have about the mental training and mindfulness, but even if it's new for you, now you have some small uh, idea about it and maybe some doors are opening in your mind about it. So if you have any questions now, okay. But if you have questions later, anytime you can ask also because it's really an important topic and sometimes people is just becoming aware of it a little bit after sleeping on it. <laughs> yeah, I experienced that too. Yes, of course. So maybe it's easier to reach out later. Um, so uh, like we would love to hear from you. Um, I think I can speak for Seda too, like to hear your, your thoughts, um, your opinions, but also where you need help, where we could be helpful. Um, yeah, and if nobody has to share anything, we just, ah, they cannot unmute because um, 
They are not allowed to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that means you're going to reach out later and, and type in. <laughs> okay. And I see some clapping. Okay. Um, yeah. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so thank you, girls. Have a nice combine. Um, oh, you got a, you got a real clap. Nice. Um, um, yeah, have fun with the combine. I hope you learn a lot. I hope you grow a lot. I hope you, many things get really clear. Like probably before they get clear, they get confused a little bit, um, but that's normal. <laughs> and then I, I'm going to be happy to see you in any other occasion. Seda, you want to say goodbye? Or? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was a pleasure to meet with you all here, guys. And I hope you enjoy and improve <laughs> and learn a lot there. And hope to meet you again some way, somewhere, somewhere, someday. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Have fun with the competition. Next day. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. You're welcome. Bye, <laughs> Bye guys. <laughs>